Today in the CX Network Bunker, the Roland R1000 multi-track recorder. 48 tracks in a 3RU package. Yeah, how, how many rack units do you reckon we would have needed to do that 10 years ago? Well, you would have had, what, four ADATs? Six. Six. Six ADATs. Six ADATs. So six times, six times the space, and I reckon an ADAT weighs a lot more. And you know, not putting the ADAT down because at its time, you know, it was it was a revolutionary. But that was device. recording on tape media. Yeah, that was recording, recording on tape media on with drive. a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And anyone who owned a VCR will know that they do from time to time break down and chew and tapes. And it's usually the moving parts and do nasty things. Okay, so forty-eight tracks on this. Firstly, where are the inputs? Okay, round the back, the inputs and the outputs because it plays back as well as recording. Uh, via these four Ethicon connectors that you see here. Now there's two inputs, two outputs, and I noticed that this is labelled REAC. Now what's that about? Okay, REAC is Roland's proprietary audio over Cat5 transport protocol. What the general idea is, you can have some digital snake boxes on your stage, plug them into the REAC C and D ports, mm. then plug your A and B ports into a V mixer. Set up all your gain and everything. The V mixer, for all intents and purposes, doesn't actually realise this unit sitting in the chain, which and is just, good. And so it which just takes good. the feeds. Yeah, yeah. Th this basically passes through those feeds, but within the setup for this unit, what you can do is you can choose which channels you want. So you can pick off channels from the C and D ports mm. to take your inputs from your stage box, and then if you wanted to record, you know some auxiliary or matrix or even your left right output from the vMixer, you can route that backwards from the vMixer into the A and B ports and pick up those inputs as well. So effectively, mm. for your recording, you've got a choice of 320 different inputs that you can feed into any of those but 48 you can pick, tracks. pick any 48 yeah. of them. Yeah. Okay. So then it records in what format? It records in broadcast wave format, 24-bit, mm. um, at either 44.1 or 48K. So industry standard file yeah, yeah, yeah. format that you can and, pull and, off. And the internal drive in this is 500 gig. It's not SSD. Um, it is a hard drive. But on 500 gig, uh, you get about 24 hours worth of recording, assuming you stack every track on. Now, you mentioned something that's actually quite important. Like, it's not SSD. So you've got a moving drive, mm -hmm. and that's the only computer part that this box really reflects. The rest of this box is like it's a recorder. It's not a computer masquerading as a recorder. Correct. I'm very much a fan of, of a dedicated device. You know, you don't use nail scissors to mow the lawn. Um, similarly, I like very much the idea of having a dedicated recorder when you want to do a recording. So as it, a recorder... To me, it makes sense. As a recorder, how does it feel? feels great. It, 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 it's got really nice transport controls. Um, there, there are some cool little things like when you press stop while you're recording, you can set it up so that you actually need to confirm it with a press of the on-screen on -screen display. It's, this is a little touch screen in here. Mm. I noticed the jog wheel feels exactly the same as the jog wheel does on a real tape deck. Shuttle, jog, stop, start, really easy to find. And you can go and find any part of a track really, really easily. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. You can actually go in and you can, um, you can choose your, your hours, minutes, seconds and frames and you can just um, scroll the jog dial and so index you can scroll to, to some number of minutes, scroll to some number of hours, bang, you're there. Yeah, the other way you can do that, you've got this button that lets you set up tracks. So, you, so you, oh, sorry, individual songs. So you can then just jump next song, next song, next song when you do your replays. Now, when I played with the display on this, it's a touchscreen display. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinarily intuitive. Like, how long did it take you to go from out of the box to the point where you were recording a gig and comfortable? Um, look, to, to, get, to get out and, and to record with the basic setup is pretty easy. Um, the most difficult part is just the routing. And there are actually some preset routing setups in there, which are named according to, or to correlate to whatever hardware you're connecting it to. So if you're connecting it to um, a 3208 and a 1608, um, digital snake there's a routing setup that reflects that and that auto maps all the inputs and everything um, so in its default configuration unless you're going to get really fancy and start mapping things in reverse out of the console um, which I had to you know just so you got to try this oh, you, or you wanted to well like, no no he I, loves in, making in, this stuff hard folks no no I'm, I'm not a fan of overcomplicating things um, but I did want to be able to get my stereo record onto this unit 
aligned in time mm. with um, with the individual tracks. Now, when you look at the the front of this, it gives you a whole heap of information. So you've got the individual tracks showing whether they're armed or not, what states they're going to go into, and whether there is any audio there and whether it's peaking. And then you've got just just on that note, the peaking indication is really nice. It's it's actually three color LED. So there's green, amber, also yellow, and then red. And when it really peaks, it turns red, and also your little peak clear button starts flashing, as you can probably see now. Um, so the, L the LCD here shows you all the channels, and you can set that up really easily for one of four scales. So you can, you can have it like from 60 dB scale or 48 dB scale or 30 dB scale, and you can set the peaks to either go after a second, two seconds, three seconds, or to hold indefinitely. And as Jim said, the little peak button here shows you when you've had one of those peaks that you really, really wanted to know about and it just holds it there until you go back and reset. Hmm. So you can do all this stuff from the front panel, but if you don't want to do that, there's the PC and Mac interface. Yeah, yeah, it's really simple. It's an R R1000 RCS software application. There is a driver you've got to install, but it just connects over USB into the front of the unit. Um, it worked first go when I ran it. And the really nice thing about this is it gives you Greatly expanded metering. It also gives you remote control of transport functions. You can index, you can set track names and so on. And you can do all your patching on there as well? Yep, you can do your patching on, on screen, uh, on the computer. Um, the patching setup on the actual touch screen, I actually find really easy. There is a sort of a from and to range function. So if you need to patch 30 channels in a row or 32 channels or eight, whatever, you can do that easily. You just choose your start and stop channels and uh, where you want to drop them into the recorder and it's done and you can patch your inputs and your outputs separately so you can have a channel that will go in on react port c channel one and then it'll spit out on react port a channel 43 if you want so you just do easy remapping within the unit mm. it's really nice how this has been set up in terms of you can go into the screen you can solo individual channels it's really easy too you just hit the block of eight and then you just press the solo button and that gives you the individual channel. When you've got nothing selected, you can change what the default source is. You mm. can either have a stereo pair of channels or you can have a sum of all of the channels. And that is also, there's a, a variable attenuation level you can set up in the system settings so that you're not you know, affronted with a great increase in SPL when it starts dropping all of those channels into your monitor mix. And you get that out of the back as well as out of the front on a headphone level. I get the impression that as a device, this is one of these things that you've just fallen in love with very quickly. I'm, I'm a little bit enamored, I'll, I'll definitely give you that. There's some other nice little things um, in terms of, of sync. You can sync it to a video color blackburst. Um, you can sync it to an external word clock, uh, which is not something that, that, that we've seen a lot of in terms of the, the React product range previously. I think you can sync the Matty Bridge to word clock, but I'm not sure. Um, and you can also feed um, LTC sent like time code. Linear in. time code. So, video people, listen up. And it's got MIDI in and out as well, or MIDI in and through. MIDI in and out slash through, yeah. yeah. So, you can link it into your MIDI based devices. Um, and that sort of relies on, I think, fairly standard SysX kind of commands, which is all. So, you could control book. it from your keyboard, you can control it from a you standard can control editor. It from, from things that run MIDI, basically, yeah. as if that's not enough control and that's not enough control. And finally, uh, we've got XLR audio outputs, so there's plus four output going straight off to monitoring. Yeah, plus four output. The only, um, the only downside to that is that there's, uh, there's no attenuator for that. So, it is full level all the time, so you want to have a control for your monitoring level. Mm. Now, in terms of other things, getting, getting other things out of the device, whilst you know, it's designed as a live recorder and you, know, you can do that sort of simulated, simulated rehearsal kind of thing with it, um, obviously recording content is much better if you can actually get it out and work with it afterwards, be that in a post situation or whatever. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can plug an external USB hard drive into the front port. Now I tried a couple of drives. I tried a little two and a half inch unpowered one mm. and the recorder didn't like that. It told me it didn't have enough power to actually power up the drive. So I got a three and a half inch drive with its own power supply. And it was happy that with in, that? And it's fine with that. What about the um, uh, memory stick? Haven't tried, but um, I think it'd probably be all right. It's a USB disc, it should probably work. It is a USB disc, it should probably work. How much use that's gonna be in terms of capacity. Most memory sticks cap out at 32, 64 gig. And it's generally cheaper just to buy a drive anyway. 
you've got to love the way he says only 32 or 64 gigs. My first computer had 8K of RAM, John. Exactly. Um, okay, so the other way you can get data out of it is you take the little cover off the front, little thumb screws, and then you've got this little drive, which is caddy based. And if you look on the back of this, you'll find there's actually a little mini USB port. So you can plug this drive directly into your computer. And then download directly and then, and then to the workstation. And then treat it like a drive, exactly. Um, I, I'm a fan of leaving these sorts of things in place. Um, but yeah, they're, you know, they're, there's certainly a couple of ways you can do it, which is nice. It's nice to have, it's nice to have options. What happens if you don't have React devices and you just want to get some other form of audio in and out of this? There is a MADI to React bridge. It's called an SMADI bridge um, from Roland, uh, which is going to cost you a couple of grand, but it is a nice, easy way of converting your MADI stream or at least 40 channels of the MADI stream. You can't get the whole thing, um, but you can get 40 channels of the MADI stream converted into a React cable and plug it in. Okay, the Roland R1000 48 track recorder price? Uh, 5995 uh, suggested sell price and that includes the drive. So price wise it's it's a little little bit less than twice what you'd expect to pay for a, a pair of 24 track recorders. Um, which I guess is fair considering that we've, we've stripped all the analog I.O. out of it. There is basically uh, only two analog things on it, and that's the monitor ports and the headphone plug, and they come from the same source anyway. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think price-wise it, it, it's pretty good value for, for what it is and what it does.